We're going to take a look at uh, question number five from the homework. But before I do that, I just want to point out uh, a couple of things that we have this new idea called the derivative of a function. And it basically finds the slope at a point. And, and if we can isolate that function, then that makes our life easier. That means we don't have to do this limit all of the time for every single point. That gets kind of tedious. So here's one version of it. The other version of f prime, the derivative of this function, whatever function we're given at some value a, is the limit as h. I was using delta x yesterday, approaches 0. So h is our delta x. It's some small change in x of f of x plus h minus f of x. And instead of having a subtraction in the bottom, that h is my difference. That's h down there. I just have an h down here. So it's got a cleaner denominator, but a more complicated numerator. So there's trade-offs between these two formulas, which is the best one. They're both great. And you just got to try one and see what happens. So the function I want to apply one of these two is f of x equals 4 divided by x squared when x equals 5. So I need to figure out what is f prime of 5. And again, what does this mean? That is the slope when x equals 5. And we could graph it to look to see what it might be like. And we'll do that after we make the calculation. So then I got to decide, do I want to use this formula here or that formula there? And I'm going to go for the red formula right now. So when I do this formula right here, I recommend first figuring out what f of x plus h is. And then second, calculate the subtraction. Third, do this division. And fourth, finally plug in the limit. Rather than plugging in it all at once, which a lot of videos and books show, um, <clears throat> that's a lot of writing and repetition, and, and I think more room for error. So I'm going to follow my step process. So my step one is what is f of x plus h. And the trick to figuring that out is just for your function, just rewrite it with parentheses. What do I mean by that? So consider it as f of blank equals 4 over blank squared. Wherever you see an x, just replace it with an open parentheses. That'll help you get this right. So here, I'm going to put my 4 over, instead of an x, I'm going to put a parentheses squared. And in the parentheses, I'm told to put that whole x plus h. All right, so will it benefit me to multiply this out? Maybe. So that would be 4 over x plus h times x plus h. And I get to distribute and combine like terms. So that's going to give me 4 over x squared. And we're going to get a, an xh from the outer and an xh from the inner. So that's going to be 2 xh's. And squeeze this in. And then there's going to be an h squared at the end there. So here's one version of it. Here's the other version of it. Which one is simpler? Eh, flip a coin. Step two, from one of these results here, subtract f of x. OK, so step two, I want to know what is that thing I just calculated above, subtract at the original function from it. So I'm going to do the first version first and see what that looks like, and then decide if I want to switch to the other version, x plus h squared minus the original function is just 4 over x squared. OK, hmm. will it make my life better to take this here and write it like this here? Uh, you know, I don't see that making my life any better. To subtract two fractions, you got to find a common denominator. And these guys really don't have any common factors, right? Factors here are x plus h times x plus h. Factors here are x times x. And an x plus h is a different factor than an x. Um, yeah, so not much I can do there. So what I'm going to get here is a new denominator that is just these two multiplied. x plus h squared times x squared. So that means this one right here, I need to multiply x squared top and bottom. And this one right here, I have to multiply the x plus h squared and the x plus h squared top and bottom. So my numerator now is 4x squared 
minus four times x plus h squared. Okay, my recollection of algebra of rational expressions like this back in, in my algebra two and pre-calculus days was that uh, in order to simplify this, I wanna leave the denominator factored, but I'm gonna have to deal with this right here. I'm gonna have to uh, multiply that out right there. And I already did that work up here. I know that x plus h squared is that sucker right there. So I just need to multiply that by negative four. All right, so next step, switch colors so it doesn't look so angry. So I have this 4x right here, x squared out front. And then I have minus four times this. So that's gonna be a minus four x squared. And then times two xh is gonna be a minus eight xh and then times h squared. So then a minus four h squared, All right? So I have to distribute the minus four through this version here. So that's my new numerator. Four times each of these terms up here. And denominator, we just have that x plus h, an x squared times the x squared there. Does this clean up? Ooh, look at that. It does clean up a little bit. These guys are gonna cancel right there. Bye-bye. And then I can do a little factoring on those two right there. So I'm gonna head in this direction here. So let's see, those canceled. And what do we have for common factors here and here? Well, they're both negative and four goes into each, and I can take an H. So I think from the numerator, I can factor out a negative four H. All right, so that's gonna leave me, I took the negative, factor out a four, that's gonna leave me a two X here. And I took the negative, I took the four, I took one of the H's, so there's an H left behind. And just double check if I distribute this back through negative 4h times 2x is negative 8xh, okay? Negative 4h times h is negative 4h squared, check. All right, that looks good. Down here, I have x plus h squared times x squared and nothing cancels. All right, wow, step two was rough. So this is the result of step two right there after some serious algebraic consideration. So now I move on to step three here where I divide by H. Now, instead of dividing by H, uh, I could multiply by one over H, right? So note on step three, taking something and dividing by H is the same thing as taking that something and multiplying by one over H, which is preferable with fractions like this. All right, new page, see if I can get that right. And let's, let's do a less angry math. Uh, where's new page right there. All right, so I have for step three, I need to take that thing I just calculated that negative four H times two X plus H over x plus h squared times x squared. And I need to multiply that by one over h. All right, so I'm on my step three here. And that's cool because dividing by h here and I have a multiple of h there, those guys are gonna cancel. So this is now negative four times two x plus h over x plus h squared times x squared and nothing else factors. So I'm done with step three and I can move on to step four. Step four is to take the limit of that as H approaches zero.
And how do we take a limit like this? Well, we cheat first. We, we test the water. We say, well, what happens if I actually plug in H instead of just approach a plug in zero instead of just approach zero? Well, if I, if I cheat and plug in zero there, then I'm going to get uh, 2x plus zero is 2x. So I'm just going to get negative 4 times 2x. And in the bottom, x plus 0 is x. So I'm going to get uh, x squared times x squared. And that causes me no grief. I'm not getting 0 over 0. Now, keep in mind, if I hadn't done steps 1, 2, and 3, I would have ended up with a 0 over 0. I would have had this big, messy concoction uh, if I just did this in one shot. And I would have had a 0 over 0. I would have failed my cheat. But since I did all that simplification, it worked. And now I can, this shit factors here, right? Uh, what factors? Well, uh, this x right here will factor with one of these x's here. So let's say we get rid of that one. So instead of a square, it's just an x. And then negative 4 times 2 is 8. So I claim that. Uh, what do we get here? Negative four times two is negative eight. And I realize I made an error right in the very beginning, but I think it's going to be okay. And then x squared times x is x cubed. And the error I made is I treated this like a problem from section uh, 3.2 instead of a 3.1 problem. You might ask, what the hell is he talking about? Well, I forgot to use this information up front. And what that means is I should have, instead of an x here, that should have been a 5 here and here, which would have made all this much easier. Oh, well, you guys get the real deal now. Well, now I'm going to plug in 5 and see what happens. So my claim is that this thing right here is my slope function, my derivative function. Derivative function, which is also slope function. And so it, if I plug in 5, should tell me the slope of the original function. So my original function, again, was f of x equals 4 over x squared. And I wanted to know what was the slope when x equals 5. And my claim is it's my f prime of 5, which is negative 8 over 5 cubed. See, 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125. So that should be negative 8 over 125 should be the slope when x equals 5. So let's graph it and see if I actually did OK. So we need a graphing tool. And let's go to Desmos, has been our friend lately. All right, original function. Use function notation, f of x equals 4 over x squared. We get that crazy thing there. It's beautiful. And we want to look at the point 5 comma f of 5. And there it is down here. And I can see the slope is very shallow down there. And that's heading downhill. And in my notes here, don't I have a shallow 8? over 125 is this relatively small number, and it's negative going downhill. OK, that's, that's promising. How do I test that that's the right slope? Well, we graph the tangent line and see what it looks like. So let's do that. To graph the tangent line to check, so we're going to do a little check here. I think this is the answer right there, question mark. So we're going to check by graphing the tangent line. And easiest way to graph a tangent line is the point slope form of a line. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And so my x1 is, is that 5 there. I don't have y1 yet. So my y1 is f of 5, which is 4 over 5 squared. 4 25ths. All right. So y minus 4 25ths should equal my slope, I think, is negative 8 1 25ths times x minus 5. And uh, there's no need to simplify that into y equals mx plus b. Let's graph it and see what happens. 
will it look like a tangent line? Y minus four twenty fifths. Oops, that's not a minus, is it? There we go. Equals M was negative eight over one twenty five. Arrow out, parentheses, x minus five. Ooh, that looks good. I think we got this sucker. All right, I'm gonna apply the other definition in a sec, see what happens. But that looks good. <laughs>